Hi everyone, back on this page in the ink house today. As I promised, I would come back and do one of the teapots for you. And it was this one that I think I said I would do. So we're gonna have a go at that one. Um, so I will come back in closely again. I just uh, like you to see the whole page so you know where I'm at in the book. So there is the teapot. What I thought I would do, I'm just gonna move my paper. I've got some paper behind the page on the other side, I'll just move it across. Um, what I'm going to do is just pop down a layer of um, colour evenly over the teapot so you can see what it looks like um, without any shading or anything on it because obviously there's a lot of shading on there already. Um, so I'm using the sky blue, I decided I wanted a sort of grey blue for this one. And uh, I'm just going to put, as I say, an even layer across. And uh, this is Polychromos pencils, by the way. It's a grey blue, so it's up to you. I just made the decision that I think I'll do all the teapots in different blues. So I'm going to put blue across the whole thing. I'm not going to leave... Maybe I should leave a bit of white, actually, thinking about it. Um, so we probably will leave a bit of white. Um, in the areas where it might be a bit like, I'm thinking like here and here and down here where it's very white anyway. So let's just uh, fill in and I just thought I would do this first so that you can see and decide whether that would be okay for you. I'm thinking here look, there's quite a white area, I'm just gonna leave a bit of that white. I'm not sure whether that's going to work. We'll see. And the same here, I'm thinking, I think it looks like this sort of brim part is catching the light, so I might leave a bit of white there. Let's just do this lower bit first, like that. And then if we leave that, it's got a bit there. I'm going to do all this in the blue. Sorry if the book keeps moving around. It's The problem with a hardback book is it's hard to flatten the pages. So uh, it can be a bit tricky. Now this bit on the top could be catching the light too. So let's just leave that for the minute. I want all that to be blue. I'm thinking I want this bit here. But I don't want to leave the whole the edge white. I want to put some colour along the edge, I like that, and then maybe leave this bit white. And with this edge, I'll put some blue across it, and maybe leave that to sort of all line up, really have the white bit all in the same place. I think it sort of makes sense. I've missed that bit. There we go. Now this isn't particularly even, I said try and get it even not doing that good a job. So I'm going to leave a little white bit there and here I'm going to leave a bit of this white sort of, and it's got a bit of blue there, but sort of lining up with this so maybe just there. Hmm. So I want a bit of that rim white to carry on with that which I've just coloured over and then maybe just a bit of white in there like that. Just that bit. And then we've got our spout and, you know, it's going to be a bit white, it's going to be a bit of shine there, but again, I don't like leaving the very edge white, so I'm going to put a bit of colour in there. Some people do that, they leave the very edge white, but it's not how I do it. Okay, so there we've got some colour and you can see the light and shade already there and have a think about whether you would be happy to just leave it like that. I see no reason why. But I'm not going to because I'm going to fiddle faddle with it a bit more. This is the light ultramarine, which is for me, I think, the next shade up from the sky blue in this sort of grey blue set. And I'm going to go over the areas that I think will be significantly darker. Okay, so it's actually been made easy for us. Um, by the shading that's been put on. This cross hatching helps. So I'm going to sort of go over the more heavily 
blackened areas and yes some people say what's the point of colouring over it which is a fair question I have fun with it it teaches me about light and shade and I think it just overemphasizes it a bit more which I think can add even more um, definition to the object so there's a lot of reasoning but you know if you want to keep it simple keep it simple by all means there's no right and wrong when it comes to color and coloring okay so there's that I've not done too much <clears throat> excuse me and then I'm going to just grab the um, ultramarine which is even darker just to do what I think would be the really really dark bits such as under here you could even use a black if you wanted to get a really dark amount of shadow in there but I think that's probably enough as we've got plenty of black in there from the line art so I'm not sure it's necessary to do any more but I really think these areas need to be darker still like that and here so I'm just going with where the really dark cross hatching is like that I'm putting a bit in there as well and under here let's have a look Hmm, I think I probably would leave that one just like that. It's quite pale because I've chosen a sort of paler blues, but I'm okay with that because if you look along the row, we've got this one here, which is a grey blue. We've got this one that we've done. We've got the um, sort of cheetah type one, and then this one. So I'm not going to colour any of the others. So I think it doesn't need to be really vibrant because none of the others are. So for me, I'm happy with that one. Um, we, that didn't take too long. Should we do another one? I'm just having a look at what we've got. I'm, as I say, I'm not going to colour any of the others on the top row. Um, we've got the one with the question mark. It hasn't got a lot of um, indication on it of colour. Um, this one is a bit more intricate with regards to the design. This has got a bit of blue on it already. This has got some design. And then we've got this really plain one. And a stripy one. And a heart shaped one. And this one which has got blue on already. Um, I think which one would probably be the trickiest? This one, I'm thinking, because we've got a pattern and a colour to think about so I think we'll do this one. I'm going to choose a different blue shade though. Um, what should we go for? Um, um, hmm. uh, yeah I think I'm going to use this. The, um, the thallo blues, this is the darkest actually. Um, I think I'm going to start with the light one like I did before. Um, so this is the light thallo blue and I'm going to do all over like I did with the other one I think I think that's the way I'm going to approach these but I'm going to leave a bit of white here in places like I did on the other one as I say I don't like it right on the edge I'm going to put a little bit of colour in there here we have to think about these stripes and are we going to do the stripes in a different colour to the rest I mean I could have left this white bit white and I'd done the stripes in the blue but that's not how I wanted to do it but that's an option for you if it's something you want to do and I think what we're doing here is we're going going to be a bit lighter in the centre so I might leave a bit of white here, just a tad. Sun. I'm sure the sun glimpsed out then for a moment. And the same if you think about the spout, it's going to be darker here. It might be a little bit lighter on the top, so I might just leave a little bit of white in there. That's a bit scruffy. 
and here I'm thinking this side looks lighter than this side like on our other teapot so we might just leave it a bit lighter there bit of a light there mm, but that doesn't match up with that does it mm, never mind I'm gonna colour over that because that is where the light comes down there so it needs to be the same here so what you can do is get your eraser just rubbing on my desk to clean it it's left a mark on my desk that wasn't a very sensible idea and uh, just take out a little bit here keep it sort of rough really there we go okay now I am going with my slightly darker blue this is the middle sallow blue and I'm going to start thinking about where it's going to be darker under here and I'm using the guidelines see we've got these lines down here to help me but I do need to make sure that fades into the other colour that I've put down there we go it's not seem quite so crucial on the handle somehow it seems to just work uh, where else have we got a dark bit here like that just sort of fade it out and under here a little bit there in here and there and up this side here and here. I'm just going to put the tiniest bit on there like that. Okay, so I'm just going to use the two um, blues for the main part of the pot because I've now got these stripes to do. Now I could use the darkest aloe blue but I think it won't, you won't notice it so much so I'm going to jump up a lot of shades. So I'm going to actually use the Prussian blue, which is significantly darker. I think now it'll help us. Now, when we're doing these stripes, we need to think about the shading still. So here it's darker and here it's lighter. So keep with that and here it swaps. So it's darker under here and a bit lighter towards there. But we still want them to be blue. So we're not leaving any white on those. And the same here, look, it's quite dark under here. And then it will lighten as we go up here. So do less layers towards the top, like that. Now here, I'm just sort of following the guidelines, really. It's a bit in there. Now, of course, you don't have to do it just blue. You can choose a different colour if you wish to. But uh, I had just decided to do a blue page. And uh, I'll be doing the wood, which won't be blue, the shelving. I shouldn't think it will be anyway. Which will be fun. I like doing wood. I've got plenty of wood tutorials if you're interested. Um, if you go to my sort of YouTube homepage and put wood, you can find them. I think there's a wooden floor from Ivy and the Inky Butterfly, which would work. Okay, so there he is. There's our teapot. So I'm going to leave it with those two. So we've got that one there and then um, up here, this one as well. So they're quite simple, but I thought... It, this book can be really daunting and so I think sometimes it helps if you get started and now you should be able to do the others I am going to do them myself I will post a completed picture of it somewhere um, not sure where and when and how but uh, you'll see it in my completed pages anyway if you um, look at that 
Um, but um, as I say, um, just to go through quickly what I'm going to do to help you if you're going to do it before you see the completed page. Wooden shelves um, with browns like our Dormouse. Um, I'm not going to colour those. I am going to colour all of those. And I'm not sure about this one. I probably will. I may not that one because it's got blue in it already. This will have some blue, but I'll leave the um, black as black. Um, I probably put a little light layer of something over that actually, because otherwise it will be black. I don't want it to be completely black, although that one is. So maybe I will because it will balance, won't it? So maybe I'll leave this one and this one. So that's basically what I'm going to do. But you know, as I say, I'll show up my completed pages. I'll try and see if I can pop one on my Facebook page um, once it's done. I'll have a think about that. Sometimes it's not always easy to slot it in because I have other things going on on there, but we'll see. But uh, for now, thank you for watching. I hope that helped you a little bit. Um, yes, yeah, just a little short video. And uh, yeah, have a really lovely day and happy colouring. <laughs>